Hello, this is Dr. Ben Finio here along with Pete the Cat, Cookie Monster, and Darth Vader. And since this is the pandemic that never ends, and my daughter is now doing online kindergarten, I will be making a bunch of Google Meet tutorials since I have already made basically every Zoom tutorial you can think of. In this video, we will start out with some of the basics of how you control the various view options within Google Meet, assuming you are a student or a participant who joined a meeting that somebody else created and not the one who started the meeting yourself. So by default, when you join a Google Meet meeting, it will start in tiled view like this, where it automatically shows everybody roughly equal size. If you want to change the view, you can go down here to this three dot menu and select change layout. We will show a little bit more about that in a minute. First thing you might want to do based on some new research about Zoom fatigue throughout the pandemic, or I guess in this case, Google Meet fatigue, if you would like, you can minimize or hide your own tile. There is some research showing that Part of the exhaustion of that comes from being in online meetings all day, even though you're just sitting at your computer, is from staring at your own face all the time. It's kind of like if you were doing this in real life, somebody following you around with a mirror, so you're always hyper aware of your own appearance. And apparently that can just be mentally exhausting. So if you would like to turn off your own view, you can select either remove this tile or minimize, and that will hide you down here so you don't have to look at yourself. I am going to keep that open for now, just so you can see what it looks like and where it puts my video. But again, if you want to turn that off, apparently that's a little healthier and can make this less fatiguing. So if you are a student and you actually want to pay attention to a class, then you might want to pin your teacher so they appear bigger on your screen and it's easier to see what they're doing. You'll see that if I move my mouse over any thumbnail on the screen, I get a little pop-up window with a thumbtack icon that I can click that will pin the yet person to the main screen. So for example, if I want to pin Cookie Monster, I mouse over him and click on the thumbtack icon. Note that this is different from Zoom where you need to right click on the person and then select pin. Here, this button pops up automatically and then you just need to left click it once to pin the person. That will automatically switch to a view where the person you have pinned is larger over here on the left and everybody else is smaller over here on the right. Now, if I go back to remove that pin, again by mousing over the person and clicking on the thumbnail, sorry, thumbtack icon again, it will unpin them and go back to this tiled view. Note another difference here, this is one of the most common questions I got about Zoom and it was in an update they released at some point. You cannot click to drag to rearrange this tiled view, at least not as a participant. So you are stuck with whatever view order it gives you automatically here. So let's go back to pinning somebody again. I'm going to pin Pete the Cat, and I forgot to mention that you can switch who is pinned by moving over the smaller picture over on the right and clicking on the thumbtack icon. That will switch to the larger image. Another comparison to Zoom, you cannot multi-pin as far as I know. So if you click on somebody, there's no option to add a second pin. For example, if two people were giving a joint presentation or if you're doing an interview and you wanted to pin two people who are interviewing you or something so you can see them bigger, you can only pin one person at a time and it will switch back and forth automatically. Now, the entire time I've been doing this, Google Meet has automatically been determining the best layout based on what it thinks I want. You can change that manually by going down here to the more options section and selecting change layout, you see this is on auto. So if I wanted to stick everything to tiled view, I could select that, then close out here. And you see that even though I have somebody pinned, it's actually still gonna stick with this view. So just because you've selected tiled view doesn't mean it's going to make everybody small. If I remove the pin, then it goes back to here. So it's not quite clear what changing that actually did. If I go back to change layout and select spotlight, it is going to show one speaker very large without those little thumbnails over here on the right. I can click and drag to move myself around. And again, if I only want to see the speaker, I can minimize myself entirely. But it has automatically determined who to show here. So if I wanted to show one person large in spotlight view, this is where it gets a little confusing. First, I would need to go to change layout, go back to tiled view, decide who I want to pin, for example, Cookie Monster. I'm gonna pin Cookie Monster. Now I'm gonna go down here, select Change Layout, and go to Spotlight View. Now I will only see Cookie Monster large. That is a little different from Sidebar View, which is what it was going to automatically before. So here again, I'm gonna to go to Change Layout, select Sidebar View, and then that is more similar to what you would call Speaker View in Zoom, 
where you see one person very large with the little thumbnails over on the right. So if you want to just see the teacher and not the other students, then you are going to want to go to spotlight view. So change layout, make sure you're on spotlight, not auto or sidebar. Then you would only see the teacher and yourself if you want to. But again, if you need to switch pins or you need to see somebody else for some reason, there's no way to do that. There are no other thumbnails here without going down to the menu, back to change layout, switching to sidebar or tiled so you can see everybody else. Just kidding, I lied, but I am too lazy to re-record those last few seconds of video. Even if you're in spotlight view, you can go down here to this show everyone button, which is the equivalent of the participants button in Zoom. That will give you a list of people in the meeting over here with pin options so you can pin them without navigating back to tiled or sidebar view. So for example, if I went to switch and pin this one, then there I have Darth Vader pinned. So I was wrong with what I said before. You don't have to go through all that clicking to change the layout first. You can just use this show everyone button over here on the right if you are in spotlight view and you need to pin someone else quickly. Now, if you are attending an online class, odds are the professor or teacher will be sharing their screen very frequently. So let's talk a little bit about your view controls when somebody else is sharing their screen. I will probably make a separate video about how to share your own screen. So you can see here, Pete the Cat has already started sharing a PowerPoint, but even though his computer is the host computer, it did not override my pin of Darth Vader here. So actually when I was in spotlight view, I could not see this shared PowerPoint at all. I had to switch back to sidebar view to see it. I am going to remove my pin of Darth Vader. And again, you will see this is a little different from Zoom if you're used to that. It's basically adding Pete's shared screen, just kind of treating it like it's another camera or tile here. When somebody shares their screen in Zoom, it tends to take things over a little bit more. So if I would like to see this shared PowerPoint large, then again, I am going to need to go here and pin that presentation. Now I can see this large. And again, if I would like that to take up the entire screen, I would have to go down here, go to change layout and select spotlight. Now I can actually see that very large. So if I go back to sidebar view, this is sort of similar to what you would get with screen sharing with Zoom's side-by-side -side view, but in Zoom, you can drag to resize this to make the videos larger if you would like. So again, that's another point for Zoom in terms of more versatility over Google Meet. But if this is what you're doing when you're taking an online class, this is probably the view you want so you can actually see the slides large and then you would see your professor or teacher and the other students over here on the right. Now, this entire time, I have not been in full screen mode. Unlike Zoom, Google Meet is not a separate desktop application. It runs in a web browser, which means you're losing a little vertical space here at the top to your browser tabs and address bar. If you would like to get rid of those and just have the meeting full screen, again, you go down here to that three dot menu and select full screen, which pretty much just expands to get rid of that extra browser stuff at the top. There are then three ways to get out of here. You can either hit escape, you can move your mouse to the top and this little X will come up so you can click on that, or you can use the menu button at the bottom to toggle full screen on and off. Once you are here though, you pretty much have all of the same layout controls where you can select auto tiled spotlight or sidebar and you can pin people as you want. So again, there's an example of I've pinned Cookie Monster and the PowerPoint is really tiny here over on the right. Probably not what you want if you have an online class, so make sure you pin the PowerPoint instead. All right, that's it for now. A quick overview of the main view controls in Google Meet. Again, since this pandemic looks like it will just never end, I will probably keep making more videos since online learning is not going away anytime soon. I will probably be doing a series of more specific videos on things like sharing your screen and other more specific features. As always, if you have a question or a comment, I can't guarantee that I'll get back to you quickly, but please go ahead and leave a comment below the video and I will do my best to get back to you. Thank you.